Yeah, okay. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Fanny Catani. I am a geologist. I have a PhD degree obtained in France at the University of uh, Paris-Saclay. And currently I work at NOSA Goddard Space Flight Center as a postdoc in order to improve, miniaturize, and show the feasibility of an instrument for in-situ planetary dating. My main skills are work preparation, analytical competencies, and computing uh, practices. I am interested by petrology, geochemistry, volcanology, and of course, planetology. My main skills and um, my professional background allow me to work in laboratory, especially for um, analytical development. So next slide, please. Uh, I will explain you my main research. Uh, so the history of a planet is preserved in the rocks and the geological structures that compose it. Our knowledge of absolute surface ages on other bodies relies on the crater calibration record for the moon. The issue with this crater calibration is the lack of samples prior 4 billion years and between 3 and 1 billion years, which introduced uh, uncertainty in applying the, the crater counting to other bodies, such as Mars. So absolute dating is needed to check and calibrate this moon chronology presently available. For that purpose, the uh, potassium margon technique appears very promising as it is based on the radioactive decay of an isotope from a major element, the potassium, often present in larger abundance than other radiometric parent elements, particularly for the moon. So the measurement of potassium and argon can be used for the in-situ dating of planetary surface rock, as long as the sample mass from which they were extracted is known. Recently, several experimental settings based on spot laser analysis have been developed to investigate the feasibility of in-situ potassium argon dating in future landing planetary missions. So I present here an in-situ potassium argon dating prototype, CARLY, based on UV laser ablation to vaporize a reproducible volume of rock without significant argon diffusion. The potassium content is measured by laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, the LIPS technique, which uses the light of the plasma formed during uh, the ablation to define the chemistry of the target with optical spectrometers. This technique is also uh, used by CAMCAM, -CAM, which compose uh, Curiosity on Mars. The argon determination is done by uh, my spectroscopy. And finally, the ablated mass definition is obtained by profilometry. So next slide, please. Thank you. So here I'll present you the main results of this study. After calibration by terrestrial uh, analogs, some of which have been developed during my PhD for this kind of experimentation, UV laser ablations were performed on an amphibolite composed of plagioclase and amphibole. The error bars on each point are defined by the uncertainty on potassium, argon, and ablatine mass measurements. And in order to reduce this uncertainty, Carly edges of this sample have been determined using the isoprone approach, where the slope obtained from the data is function of the age. Uh, Carly results yield uh, accurate experimental uh, ages with precision within the NASA goal of 10% uncertainty. We can also notice that the capabilities and the accuracy of this institute technique have been proven by several projects such as in France, Japan, and Mexico. The future work will be focused on the miniaturization uh, of this instrument which is composed by devices already proven on flight missions, such as the LIPS technique and the QMS. It was selected by the DALI program to develop an instrument for the moon. So our team will build a high fidelity brass board to minimize the mass, the volume, and the power resources shown to satisfy all the functional and science requirements. So we will uh, calibrate this uh, miniaturized version for the moon and focus on the improvement of the plasma detection and the lips processing. Finally, next slide, please. 
uh, you can find here my contact if you are interested by my profile to work or just to talk with me, don't hesitate. Also, I am available for a job in one year and open to stay in US or go back in Europe. So you can contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny. All right, uh, up next is Arvin. Okay, uh, whenever you're ready. Uh, am I visible? Yes. Cool. Uh, so, hi, uh, my name is Arvind Aradhya. I'm a graduate student at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Uh, I completed my master's in electronic engineering from the University of Warwick in the UK. And I'm interested in instrumentation and a little bit of a, a shift from probably what you guys are used to uh, and hearing from people with geology backgrounds. I'm an electronic engineer, so I would like to build the instruments that help you do your work essentially. Uh, so my career interests are in raising the TRLs of instruments from say TRL four to seven. If that was, if you ask me for a 60 second elevator pitch, that's what I tell you. Um, in terms of uh, using new transducers or developing new transducers and sensors, uh, new uh, using new phenomena, something like uh, for an example, kinetic inductors detectors for large format readouts and uh, with spectral information. Um, and the other interest that I have is in operationeering is, is a word I think I concocted, but what I mean by that is developing payload capabilities or conferring payload capabilities onto existing systems, uh, specifically in the realm of radio science um, and RF, because that's my background and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I'm currently seeking, I'm, I'm a graduate student at the University of Colorado, a PhD student, but I'm not yet associated with the project or uh, uh, in terms of having funding for a PhD thesis topics. So I'm still looking for PhD student positions. Uh, I'm currently doing my coursework and I will be graduating with the uh, masters as an intermediate step to the PhD uh, in 2021. So looking for RA positions uh, or co-ops or internships. And as the slide hopefully shows, I'm pretty heavily into outreach and astrophotography and things like that. So I kind of help out with giving talks uh, to school students and uh, here at the university. Uh, those are my contact details. I think we can throw them up uh, later on. Uh, if you go to the next slide, then I can talk about some of my uh, research and work experience. So before I came to CU Boulder, I was working in a government of India lab called the Society for Applied Microelectronic Engineering and Research. It's a mouthful, but that's where I got my RF experience. So uh, I have developed mostly remote sensing instrumentation uh, in terms of lightning detection and localization network, uh, digital ionospheric radar, uh, uh, GPS-based receiver, uh, and all that was done when I was at Samir. Um, here, in terms of these things, I was involved with the test testing uh, of the actual equipment. So in lab measurements with RF equipment and all the sorts of paraphernalia that you use for uh, testing electronic systems, such as oscilloscopes and data acquisition devices, uh, scripting, programming, and so on, and electronic design as well of circuitry. Uh, once I got to see you, uh, I actually was, uh, I've taken uh, part in more remote sensing stuff. Uh, currently, I was uh, working on a finesse proposal for developing a deep UV or a vacuum UV fiber fed standoff Raman spectrograph uh, spectrometer, which uh, essentially uses fiber optics to have a really fine cutoff. Um, I also worked on the characterization of UV reflectance coatings and uh, some of the other stuff that I've done, you can see there. That's on the remote sensing side. On the in situ side, uh, during my undergrad, I worked on a odor sensor, essentially an organic conducting polymer sensor, which you can see in the top left, and uh, which detected ethanol vapor and concentration. And we put that on a robot to track up the concentration gradient. Uh, with respect to other stuff uh, that I've done once I've come to see you is I'm involved in a global, a great lunar expedition for everyone. It's a student-led mission to place those chipsets, which you can see on the left of your screen. Uh, which are essentially just five centimeter by five centimeter based PCBs, which are their own spacecraft. Uh, leveraging Internet of Things technology and cheap microcontrollers, we want to use uh, these things to do science on cheaply. And uh, yeah, that's basically more or less uh, kind of a scattershot experience of what I have in terms of instrumentation. I'm agnostic as to what finally I end up in, but I want to build things that fly in space. Uh, on the next slide. So currently at CU, I'm part of this mission called CANVAS, which is the Climatology, Transphysiogenic, and Natural VLF Wave Activity in Space. 
Uh, and I am the instrumental lead and I built the instrumentation board, uh, including all the electronics for signal conditioning processing, uh, for detecting lightning uh, and whistler waves as they propagate in the atmosphere. And the other stuff, uh, that's just a list of skills. And yeah, please feel free to contact me. I think I'm out of time. I get a few seconds left, but great. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, next, Macy. Let's get your video going. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Macy. Sorry for the sun. I'm in Hawaii, so can't help it. <laughs> um, so my name is Macy Sanford. I am a PhD candidate at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, I'm looking to graduate, not looking, but hoping to graduate in early July, um, finishing up the last of my PhD work. Um, I'm mostly interested in planetary science and exploration. And today I thought I'd just give you guys a brief overview of what my PhD look like, looks like. So this is the title, Innovative Remote Spectroscopy Techniques for Planetary Exploration. I kind of took my PhD as a good opportunity to dip my toes in, in um, the various parts of a mission because that's what I'm interested in primarily is um, planetary science and exploration missions. Um, so I uh, have experience in developing instrumentation and um, quantifying and qualifying the instrumentation for various space um, exploration missions. And I also have a little bit of experience in onboard processing. So I'm just gonna go over um, each of those projects a little bit in detail. So if you can go to the next slide. So in case you weren't familiar, Raman spectroscopy is a, a type of spectroscopy that studies the interaction of light with matter. And in particular, it studies the inelastic collisions. So um, on the left side, you can kind of see the different types of transitions we see um, in Raman spectroscopy. We observe the shift in frequency of the scattered light due to that inelastic collision. And we're able to determine, based on the frequency of that shift, the various vibrational modes that are present in whatever material we, we are looking at and identify um, you know, that mineral molecule. On the right side is uh, our compact uh, remote Raman uh, spectrometer. Uh, if you go to the next slide. So here are the experiments that I've done for my PhD work. So on the left is a remote exper experiment. At 120 meters, we were able to collect uh, various Raman spectrum of H2O and H2O ice, as well as CO2 ice. Um, we did some organics, naphthalene and urea, and uh, we were also able to collect uh, the spectrum of beta alanine, which is an amino acid. Um, in the image here is basically just a big block of quartz crystal. Um, on the right side is the experiment that I did um, to uh, simulate what the ocean worlds or icy moons might be like. So the particulate ice that you see here is relevant to the surface. And we also did um, solid ice blocks as well as uh, liquid salt brines to simulate the ocean. If you go to the next slide. This is an, just an example in case you weren't familiar with Raman spectroscopy, but what our, our spectra look like, they're high resolution, our peaks are sharp. Um, on the left is glycine at 2.46 molarity in water. Uh, this is the particulate ice that I showed in the, in the previous slide. And on the right hand side is um, a solid distilled water and uh, that is over top of hydrated salt grains uh, which is just Epsom salt and as you can see we're able to see the signature of the Epsom salt through the ice which makes Raman spectroscopy a really good um, you know technique to use especially in exploring these icy moons because we're able to penetrate the first few centimeters especially if it's ice. Um, next slide. So moving on to my last project this is actually through an internship at uh, JPL with the Imaging Spectroscopy Group. I'm working to develop onboard processing prioritization algorithms for UCIS Moon, which is a, another DALI sponsored project to help develop um, the instrument that will look at volatiles um, at the southern pole of the moon. Um, because we don't have lunar a specific uh, lunar data or a lunar mission that um, collected data out to 3.6 micron, uh, I was able to extrapolate and um, create a whole new data set um, that we're going to test with a couple rudimentary prioritization algorithms, which will basically look for absorption features uh, for particular minerals and volatiles that we're interested in. Uh, next slide. 
So I'm going to be defending in early July of this year um, with a PhD in Earth and Planetary Science. As I uh, briefly introduced, I have experience in building Raman spectrometers, collecting and processing spectral data of various kinds, and developing algorithms for use on board instrumentation in Python. I am mostly interested in working to build instrumentation, create data products, systems engineering in general, as well as missions at all phases. And I have two first author manuscripts currently in review and a third one that is in preparation. Um, and my contact information is at the bottom of this slide. Um, and yeah, that's me. Thank you, Macy. <coughs>